Throughout history and prehistory, all over the world, there have been legends and myths of human interaction with highly intelligent, non-human persons, most of which are not necessarily connected with outer space. In fact, that notion is rare up until our current age. The Hopi said that the ant people came from the caves to teach them. The aboriginal Australians maintained that the Wangina created them, and Ezekiel encountered hyper-intelligent beings as well. Some of these occurrences were seen in a positive light, and others were downright horrific, indicating multiple intentions of multiple different species. But these old stories elude us, as we were not there, and we cannot speak with anyone who was there. But lucky for us, these exact kind of occurrences happen still frequently to this day, and those who have lived through, experienced, been inspired by, and or traumatized by, and in many cases, cases have survived, sometimes, and I repeat, sometimes, come forward. Reluctantly, the similarities between yesteryear's occurrences and those of today are not only striking, but tend to raise more questions than answers. And just like the legends of old, these modern stories, now deemed paranormal as opposed to myth, do not skip a beat when it comes to being weird as all f so I want to get into the Brazilian incident. I can't tell you that one without telling you this one first. And it's important to note that covering up strange happenings was a lot easier back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s before the internet than it is now. So let's keep that in mind throughout this video as we delve into these stories. So. Flatwoods, West Virginia, 25 miles from Point Pleasant. A couple dudes named Edward, Freddie, and Tommy saw a bright flash in the sky. And to their surprise, they also witnessed this thing land on some farmland. And whenever they saw this thing hit the ground, they didn't necessarily investigate. They ran home to go get more people. I mean, this is the beginning of a Stephen King film, if you ask me. The group that they assembled was a woman named Kathleen, two other local youths, and a National Guardsman named Eugene Lemon. And all of them went back to the site where the boys saw this fucking thing. Arriving at the site, they saw a pulsing red light. Upon witnessing this Sergeant Lemon decided to shine his flashlight in that direction. And to the astonishment of everyone within the group encountered the completely unexpected. Much to the surprise of these spectators, they came into contact with what was described as a man, also described as by some of the spectators as a demon. This so-called man was a creature with a red face and a pointed hood. Right, insert joke about pointed hood and get demonetized. This thing had orange eyes and was not necessarily on the ground. It was reported to have angled arms and hands and gave off some kind of vapor from its face. And just as quickly as this group put eyes on this thing, it turned to them and began gliding in their direction. And as it did, it created what was described as a machine or mechanical light squeal. This, of course, caused shock, so much so that Sergeant Lemon, this military man, was startled enough to drop his flashlight, which caused the entire group to just f***ing run away. Upon returning to the town, the entire group became nauseated by what they assumed was from this sort of pungent mist, as they described it. What's fun to note is that newspapers later, as this story caught fire, reported that these spectators had contracted radiation poisoning. This is actually completely not true. And speaking of which, these spectators reported this being uh, as being about seven to eight feet tall, and the newspapers likewise reported it as being 11 to 12 feet tall. Thus continuing to prove that no matter how astonishing a story is, the news will find a way to lie about it. 
Authorities responding to this incident the next day went to the location and reported finding nothing of any significance. However, locals and citizens of Flatwoods, as you might imagine, became curious and went there themselves. The, some of the locals found things at the site such as ruts in the ground and a strange gummy deposit. And this has caused people to speculate that of a UFO, but let's let's keep it reeled in for now. This story caught the news. It became national headlines, of course, and these people were actually not the only witnesses of this strange creature or the craft in which it is assumed it had come from. But it is only fair to detail what the skeptics have to say about this event that happened pre-internet. Skeptics to say that the light in the sky that was witnessed by multiple people across three different states, two or three different states, was a meteor, and that the landing of this meteor was imagined by the boys. The skeptics are also saying that the pulsing light was a hazard beacon for planes. Uh, that does make sense, but the problem is, if you look at the location in which this event happened, you wouldn't have been able to see any hazard lights nearby. However, there's really no substantial proof of that being so. We have to take their word for it on that. And that brings us to the creature itself. The skeptics are saying that it was a, is a barn owl. You know, the kind of owl that vomits out poisonous vapor. Whenever we see, we hear that description of the, uh, the claw-like angled hands that this thing had, it does seem reminiscent of a barn owl. But each of these spectators also reported upon the garment in which this creature wore, which was a mechanical, machine-like, almost dress, so to speak. In which case, the skeptics argue that that was foliage. Another kudos I'll give to the skeptics is that as this thing floated in the glided in, in their direction, that also seems a lot like an owl's silent flying. Uh, yo, Nathan, what's up, bro? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm making a video right now, so you're in it. Oh. What's, <laughs> how, how long are you going to be up for? Forever, I just woke up. I'm going to be up forever. <laughs> if I, <laughs> that's right. In about 30 minutes, is that cool, man? Yeah, sure. All right, man, talk to you soon. Uh, you guys gotta check out my buddy Nathan's shit. Uh, look up Black Waltz on YouTube and Sidereal, a black metal band called Sidereal. He's the drummer of Sidereal and the vocalist of Black Waltz. It's badass shit. In fact, I use Sidereal music in these videos all the time. All right, so back to the skeptics. Uh, another strange thing about the owl hypothesis, this creature's face and composure was described as being reptilian by these witnesses and other witnesses. That kind of throws a, a wrench in the entire bird thing. And I mean, when we look at the drawings made by all of the individuals and then look at the barn owl, I mean, I wonder if I should be looking up for, maybe I'm gonna put the pictures up here. I don't know, oh my fucking shit went blue, hold on. Skeptics continue on that the gummy residue found by the locals must have been oil from a leaky truck. They also claim that to associate this owl with this phantom that later became known as the Flatwoods Phantom. Sergeant Lemon is a National Guardsman. He freaked out too. These aren't just kids and women freaking out and running away. And he reports the same thing as they did. What's very interesting about this is when you go on Wikipedia, they debunk it by saying that description of the creature vary from person to person, and then they leave it at that. Looking into this, I found that the differences in the description of the creature was simply a disagreement of what the arms looked like and nothing further. This is a perfect example of with the power of media through newspaper propaganda, you can debunk something very easily because this is, again, pre-internet. 
the people who saw this thing, all of them, didn't have a way for their voices to actually be heard. They had to be filtered through propagandist media, of which we all know is absolutely absurd on both sides. Either the media stories exaggerated it or they completely debunked it. Nobody actually covered the story. Unlike this next story we get to in which we have the internet and the people can come forward and tell their stories and create verifiable and credible witness statements. I'm not dismissing this owl case, just like the Mothman. Sometimes owls are very startling, especially when they're fucking up in a tree or something like that, and they make eye contact with you. It gets fucking scary. I digress, and let's jump into the events, the unbelievable events that occurred in Brazil. Let's go. Very recently in Virginia, Brazil, NORAD reported an aircraft. It came up as uh, unidentified. Utilizing radar, they witnessed this device that seemed to have crashed. Very coincidentally, at the same time as this happening, there was a farming couple in the same location that reported seeing a cylindrical tic-tac shaped flying device above their farmland, floating silently as we see a lot nowadays. Not long after, a man named Carlos was driving his truck when he saw the same cylindrical craft, or craft so to speak, in the air billowing some kind of white smoke. And this caught his curiosity, he decided to follow it. This man had the balls to do so and was actually able to find the so-called crash site where this thing Sheer curiosity took over this man and he approached the site where he reported to not be able to breathe the air because of this white mist. And he used his shirt to cover his mouth and face and looked around, reporting that despite looking like a crash site, he didn't see any survivors or bodies. And much to his dismay, very quickly afterwards, he was approached by several trucks, military trucks, military personnel, a swarm of government officials. They kicked his ass off the site and he went back into town where he was met with two men who made it clear to him that they knew him and they knew his family. And upon letting him know that, not so politely asked him to shut the fuck up about the entire thing. In which case he did for a long time. As, as would I. About three hours after the supposed crash site, a college student reported seeing an oily creature, like a man, like a humanoid, rummaging from place to place while injured. It, this startled him incredibly and he fled with three fingers on each hand. Then not long after that, only a few blocks away, three women reported seeing this exact same creature, an oily, fetal, struggling creature with three fingers on each hand. These girls found this demon-like creature to be intriguing until, well, it turned and it looked at them. And when something looks at you like this, you can just instinctually know that it's intelligent. Not a creature, but a person, a non-human person. What happened next though, exceeds anything that we know about intelligence. The being said to them, and I quote, help, I am afraid. But when it said this, its lips didn't move and it didn't make a sound. This non-human person could match the thought frequency of the girls and send communication on that channel or frequency from mind to mind. This is known as telepathic communion. So, I mean, this shit just went from witnesses and sightings to communion, interaction, communication between separate species. And not surprising, despite this creature needing help, sight was so startling that the girls, just like the, the previous characters within the story, fled. They ran home and they said that they saw a demon. It's important to note that no one reported seeing an alien or a gray. They said what they saw was demonic. 
of course, we realize that fear can cause somebody to describe something as demonic despite this thing needing help and possibly being of innocent origin. This description of it being a demon reminds me a lot of this Flatwoods Phantom, which was also described as being a demon, not an alien, by the direct spectators. These girls went to gather some people and go back to the site with even with their mother and found in the mud, as this was a bit of a rainy day, was a footprint. This footprint had three toes. This matches exactly with what the original man, our college student, described on this being's hands. It's important to keep in mind at this point that these spectators were unrelated and not in cahoots. Everyone in this story so far and all of the next characters, uh, yeah, yeah, this keeps going, reported this scent of ammonia, like a chemical smell that lingered in their noses for days, weeks, and in some cases, even months afterwards. Keep that in mind as we go on here. And quick side note, this chemical smell reminds me a lot of DMT, but let's, again, let's keep it reeled in for now. This brings us to the next part of the story where two police officers patrolling the area actually also saw this thing sort of rummaging across the road. Despite being startled, unlike our previous witnesses, Officer Marco saw this thing and he jumped out of the patrol car and decided to help this distressed creature. Attempting to do the right thing, Officer Marco wrangled this creature and brought it to the hospital where it died. And that's where the story starts to get a little batshit crazy. This next part is alleged, so let's keep that in mind, but also keep our minds open. Officer Marcos, being the only one to actually handle this creature, became very ill, like those in Flatwoods, and many other cases of contact with hypersentient humanoids. This is a reoccurring theme. Marcos himself reeked of this chemical smell, which seemed to completely permeate him. This nasty ass shit wouldn't wash off, and M Officer Marcos died in intensive care of unknown causes. He was buried immediately after his death as a concern for public safety because of his death being so mysterious. And also because the fact that now, according to autopsy, 8% of his blood was now registering as an unknown, unknown substance. And a uh, heads up, uh, a lot more people die. It's reported that Marcos might have had a cyst that caused him to die. This, so, as if this can't get any more fucked up, this humanoid person had company. After the sickly creature had been witnessed by the previous spectators, many townspeople, many, saw this other thing running around, healthy and unharmed. And these same spectators also saw military trucks show up, wrangle up what was described to be something struggling and frantically moving inside of a black plastic bag. At this point, it's worth noting that certain things can't be kept a secret. Within this town, there was military everywhere. This could not be ignored by any citizens within the vicinity, which makes a cover-up very difficult, as we will see here momentarily. If you are not familiar with this story, hold on to your f***ing ass, because this next part, oh my 